birth. A more alarming fact is that the risk of SIDS triples for babies exposed both during pregnancy and after birth. Research also indicates that babies and young children exposed to tobacco smoke develop more colds and other diseases than babies and young children not exposed. When planning for the health and safety of your baby, remember that no smoking is good for everyone. It's been more than two years now since SIDS claimed the life of little Declan. We kept saying, how are we going to deal with this anniversary? You know, one year, you know, you were going through it, the birthdays, going through everything. And I had found out that I was pregnant and I had a due date of November 7th. And um, Michael Declan was born on October 31st, one day before the anniversary of the one year for Declan's death. I mean, talk about a gift. It was just kind of a miracle and things happen for a reason. I just kind of, he's been a pure joy for us and I wouldn't have done it any different. He'll never replace Declan. As a matter of fact, he's very different from Declan, but he has really helped us go through this process. Michael's for two years old now, he still does not have a blanket in his bed. He doesn't have a stuffed animal. I mean, it sounds maybe cruel, but he does not have a stuffed animal in his bed. There's no bumper pads in his bed. He's thrilled to death with his Mickey Mouse sheet. Finally, it's important that you tell everyone who cares for your baby about reducing the risk of SIDS. Tell grandparents and other relatives, daycare providers, occasional babysitters, and friends that back to sleep is the number one way to reduce the risk of SIDS. Every year, one million children will have a brain injury. 30,000 children will have permanent disabilities as a result of their injuries. The problems coming from a brain injury may take months or even years to show themselves, creating lifelong challenges for children and their families. Here's one family's experience. Brock was about 23 months old and he was at Walmart with a member of our extended family and she had two other toddlers with her and he was in the shopping buggy in the shopping cart and she turned around and Brock stood up in the cart and fell out on his head. We had no idea at all that it would cause problems later on because the skull had healed, you know, and the clots had dissolved. And the teacher called me in and she was real concerned because Brock couldn't hold a pair of scissors, you know, and all the other kids could. And um, he couldn't color in the lines. He couldn't hold a crayon the right way. It was really fine motor control issues that she was concerned with. And, and I just wasn't. I just excused it. I said, well, he'll eventually be able to do that, and right now I want him playing. You know, all of childhood was difficult, just in terms of, you know, being teased by other kids. He was typically 
pegged as the class idiot and treated as such. You know, um, one year, I'll never forget, um, they gave out awards at the end of the school year and the teacher gave Brock the biggest pest award because he asked so many questions, you know. And so there were some really hard times, some really um, degrading experiences and some um, things that are heartbreaking for a mother to watch a child have to go through. Later in this tape, we'll hear more about Brock and his story. Babies and toddlers suffer traumatic brain injuries when their heads are hit hard or when their brains don't get enough oxygen for a long period of time. A baby or child might black out or appear out of it or confuse for a while after suffering a brain injury. The injury might cause the baby or child to experience changes in the way he or she thinks, feels, or behaves. The brain is soft and delicate like 